everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Kelly Barrett, host of Etc. Live on the Vibe. How I'm excited! I how excited am I today? We have, uh, and I'm so incredibly proud to welcome international recording artist from the iconic legends Nazareth. Welcome, Pete Agnew. Hi, Kelly. Nice to be with you. Thank you so much for being here. You know, interesting fact. First of all, you're the first guest I've ever had where it's daytime here and it's actually nighttime where you are. Well, it's definitely nighttime. <laughs> and uh, second interesting little fact right here, we were going to do this show from your home in Scotland, but as luck would have it, tell the viewers where you are tonight. Well, we're actually, we're, it turns out that we've got a gig. We're playing a, we're playing a, an, an indoor festival in a place called Minehead in England, a way down about 500 miles from where we live. Uh, and it's called the Giants of Rock. And this is one of the one of the, the shows that have managed to to survive the pandemic, you know, and they've been allowed to go ahead. So we, we didn't know about this when I lined up to do this show with you. Uh, I didn't know who we were going to be playing, but anyway, it doesn't matter because uh, I'm actually backstage. This is this is not this is not my color scheme that I chose at home. Um, <laughs> uh, <and> so <laughs> so we're playing. We're actually playing. In two hours, so I'm, I'm, we start at nine o'clock here. So, uh, I'm not, so that's what we're doing. And instead of being going to be doing it from home, I'm doing it from main head in England. So there you go. Well, how exciting is that? It's, it's got to feel good. I understand your first your first gig in quite a while was last weekend. Well, I mean, ever since actually since we since this thing started, you know, we played we played on the seventh of March in 2020. That was in a place called Martin and. Uh, in Slovakia, and that was the last gig we did. We came home from that, and then the world closed down. You know, the next week, and our equipment was stuck in Slovakia for about nine months. It was unbelievable. Um, then we never played anything at all. Well, nobody could right up until just uh, September, just there. And, and we did six shows last year. We did one in one in Durham in England, a, a festival. Then we did a uh, show in Prague in the Czech Republic. And then we did three shows in Denmark. And then the last show we did at the end of the year was in Switzerland. It was another festival thing. And then that was it. And it was supposed to be it until um, my next two shows are in, again in the Czech Republic in the middle of April. So these two, that were one last week and this one, got thrown in. So we're very happy to be able to. Well, it keeps the hand in, doesn't it, you know? You know, just, just, it, it just, you just remember, I played last week uh, in Skegness at this festival, and, and I mean, it wasn't. <laughs> everybody was saying, you know, can you remember? Oh, I can remember that, but I remember, oh, you know, there's a, and I remember that ending, and oh, what did we do in that? Just go we out and stage. And going, what about, what about? Oh no, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Remember, you know, but what you, what you're never ready for is actually the weight of that guitar. For an hour and a half, you know. I would, I would imagine. <laughs> but, the time, but the time we were half an hour into the set, I was going, Whoa, well, I don't know about remembering the numbers, but I don't know if I can make it. You know, like, so that was the hardest thing, was actually carrying that piece of wood around for that. Uh, <laughs> I would imagine. You know, Peter, I'm, I'm thrilled to have you at this point in time, you know, upon the 50th anniversary of this crazy, amazing journey that is Nazareth uh, with a new album, new frontman. There, well, there's a lot happening for you right now. As actually, well, what happened? We did, we did record, we did record a new, a new album in August there. Yeah. Uh, so that's a, a world, and it doesn't come out. It'll come out. I think it's March. They're looking at. I think it's March. Uh, uh, April, April. I'm trying to get it right myself here. Uh, I, I, I see, I'm, 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 I'm confused. March or April? It's coming out. Right. Uh, and uh, it's uh, the 25th album. And it's a uh, 25th studio album, so it's quite a sort of milestone, you know. Um, and I'm very, I mean, if anybody had told us when we made that first one, I'd be making another one uh, when I was 75. Uh, you know, I would would have laughed at them, but that's the way rock and roll has gone, eh? It lasted. It's lasted. But you know what? We want to hear it, Pete. We're, we, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that you have a new album coming out. You know, I was listening as I was getting ready for the show today, I was listening to Nazareth's greatest hits. And I gotta say, it's it's just hit after hit. You know, it's like, oh, I love this song. Oh, I love this song too. Oh, I think I love this one the most. Then the next one comes on, and I think I love this one the most. 
Oh, well, that, was, that was an album. That was an album. That album was actually released very early in her career. You know that because that, that was the one and, and that went absolutely nuts in Canada. You know that <laughs> it was. It was the. It was a huge sell in Canada, and uh, that that's what because when we actually when we did the first album, the first actual hit in Canada was obviously this flight tonight and there was all the reasons for that and of course that's when everybody when they did the greatest hits album they put all the, the songs on that were hits in europe they put them on that one that was the albums that came before that loud and proud and of course everybody heard them and it's so like unbelievable in canada it was so it was a very very good record. and everybody and when everybody refers to the albums every place else they talk about this album or that album. When you're in Canada, they always the greatest hits. That's the one that that was always the one everybody got there. You know. Great. Well, we sure do love you in Canada, eh? I got to throw the A, and you always have to throw the A in when you're talking to a non-Canadian. Oh, we, we, we do. We, we do a lot of A's in Scotland as well, eh? Is that right, eh? Cool. But, it's, but it's, eh, eh, you know, I think I think you got a lot of that from all the Scotsmen that came across there. That, uh, <laughs> It's uh, there's some parts there. Are, there are, I know no more, I know more people in Canada than I know in Scotland. You know, I was talking to our mutual good friend Bernie Aubin last night. Uh, he wants you to know that he is the tour bus lined up for this summer tour. Who's this? Bernie Aubin. Oh, Bernie. Oh, well, he hasn't told me about it yet. Yeah. <laughs> He wanted me to pass that on to you. So the tour bus is lined up. It'll be waiting on the runway for you. Oh, and did he? Oh, did he? Well, it's nice that he told you. It'd be nice if he told me. Uh, no, it's been, you know, every, every year, uh, well, our, our tour bus, our bus driver, Jerry from Calgary, funny enough, uh, he was he was the man for years there. He retired. And it's, oh, it's awful, you know, because he was such a great guy. And he's a hard man to replace, you know. And uh, we toured everywhere with Jerry, so. I don't know if you're watching this or not, but uh, he's he. So since then, you know, we have to look for another bus and another driver, and it's always a bit, mm, you know, who do you know? But I'm well, so, I think you have some volunteers just from from the comments that are coming in already, Pete, and the viewers that are watching today. I have a feeling if you wanted to find one, you could probably, I could probably hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> so Bernie treats you pretty well when you come to Canada, does he? Always. I well, I've known Bernie a long, long time when when he was. Uh, I remember meeting Bernie when he was just a just a boy in Quebec City. Like when I was in a, I was in a sitting in a cafe, um, sitting in a, in a cafe in Quebec City, and this wee guy was walking past and he saw me in the window and he come in, he come in to, to, to and that was that was Bernie then. That was before he was a drummer and before the headpins and before Canadian classic rock and all these things. And that was a long, long time ago. But, uh, yeah, yeah, man. Um, we always get, we always get good tours o over in Canada with him. I mean, we not we, we normally come every year. Uh, we try to come every year, <clears throat> but again, you know, the last I, I think actually we never came in twenty nineteen. So we've never been since twenty eighteen. So it's going to be by the time we come back, it's going to have been four years since we, since we've been in Canada, which is the longest for us. You know, because as I say, we normally try to do it every year or at least you know every two years. You know? Because I mean, it's it's always been a big it's always been a big country for us, you know. Right, right. So it's, it's been you know it's been good. I mean, Canada has always been uh, a main a main touring country for that. See, when we did um, when we did Canada, what what happened in, in the in the old in the old days? Everybody used to tour. I remember all the British bands and and all the European bands. They used to come and they used to do an, an, an American tour. It was like a North American tour, and they'd jump up and they'd do. A date in Canada, you know, the day Toronto, or they do Montreal, or the maybe Vancouver, or, you know, something like that. Yeah, they do that, and we were the first ones to actually do a coast to coast Canadian tour. We said we're, we're going to go, we're, we'll do an American tour, which we do. We used to do them every year, but then instead of just jumping up to Canada for a for a show here and there, we said we'll do a Canada tour, and that became a thing with us then. So. We normally now, uh, normally what happens is now, as we come in, we do a Canadian tour and we jump down over the border to do a couple in America. <laughs> come back up. It's the other way around now. <laughs> right. You know, I, 
and I want to talk about the new album a little bit more in a second here, but um, I want to, I always like to get a little bit of history and I need to ask you this question. Pete. Do you think you were born a musician in that? Was this something you knew that it was a path you would take from a very young age? Well, from a very young age, I was always very, very, uh, yeah, but a, a musical family, you know, I mean, the, 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 well, my folks were, they were always they were very good singers. My mother was a dancer. Uh, not, not that's uh, nothing to do with music, but it does, I suppose. Uh, no, even when I was, <clears throat> I can remember, like when I was about five and six, like playing like harmonica, and just grab anything that you could get a hold of. You, know, I remember an old broken down squeeze box thing that some uncle of mine had. I remember playing that. I remember going to visit auntie's houses that had a, a piano and no, that nobody played. And so I used to try and have them try and pick out tunes and that. So I was always very, very interested in playing and I always sang, you know, and, and so I was doing, you know, the, the, the school concerty things, up, you know, when was, and that, that type of thing. But it was a bit, by the time I was, yeah, yeah, when, when I, I knew I always wanted to, to play music, you know, and <clears throat> nobody really, no, never really knew exactly what it was going to be. And then, of course, Elvis came out. And everybody wanted to play the guitar. You know? Right. That's how you get the girls. <laughs> that was it. That was it, you know. So um, that was it. That was it then. So I got, one, you know, once I was 11, you know, and once you get your first guitar, I never stopped. In fact, right. it was funny. I was just, I was saying with this, um, with this uh, pandemic thing, that last year I actually wrote a thing on our Facebook. I think it was the first, it's the first year that I've never done a, a show all year since I was 11 years old. You know, we always had, I always had shows of some kind that I've done and always had some kind of group, you know, a little, or oh, in those days it was just, it just your pals, you know, but we were playing at different things, you know, it's youth clubs and stuff like that. But uh, that was the, that was the first time since I was 11 that we never played. That was. Wow. So, you know, I, I often, and I, it's a phrase that I mention all the time on this show and, and it was a phrase that I heard in a, in a psychology class, and it's uh, a child that plays in rehearsal for the future. And I really believe that, you know, and, and case in point here, that you were that you were bitten by that bug at such an early age. And then, you know, in 1961, you formed the band called the Shadettes. So and, and, and you were initially the band's rhythm section, not the bass player. And then no. the band needed a new bassist. No, I was the lead singer with the Shadettes. Okay. That, that started the Shadettes. And that was long. That was that was when Dan was just a pal of mine. He used to run around with us. You know, he used to come. He used to come and get the girls. You know, that's where he <laughs> he used to come along and just travel around in the van with us. And uh, so, I, and it was uh, it was nineteen sixty five before we got Dan to, to join. So the band was going about four years before then. Actually, if you if you take a look at our Facebook this week, there's a bit of a laugh in there because. Um, the Shadets, we used to have these bright yellow suits, you know, bright the suits. All the bands had <laughs> uniforms in those days, you know. And with these bright yellow suits with a black S on the foot on the <laughs> yeah. And I've I've had that jacket since then, since I was 17 when when we got that. 60, 64, I think we bought that. So this week we were well uh, yeah, yeah, during the week there on Tuesday, we were filming. In Edinburgh, we're doing a video for the new album, one of the tracks in the new album. And I was like, oh, we're going to wear, you know, you know what are you going to, what's, what everybody's going to, what, 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 what's going to be like, what are you going to wear? And I, oh, I don't know, we'll think of something. Else. And while I, while I was having a look through the wardrobe, I saw my jacket, the, 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 the Shadette's jacket from, from 58 years ago, right? So I put this thing on and I could still get it on. <laughs> that wouldn't, it fit just as well, but I still put it on. So um, I've, uh, I've, I've worn it. For, we did one take where I wore this thing when we're doing the filming. You'll get just a glance of it. They're just going to just, I mean, I'm not going to do the whole number with that one, but there'll be a little glance of it on the video. Um, so that was the, the actually the original Shadette's jacket. So it's, it's 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 got really famous in the past. It's been worn now, but yeah, that's great. It's really good, good fun. So that yeah, um, I, check it out on Facebook, guys. <laughs> I, I, oh, it's it's cracker. It was really funny. It was really funny because I, I we dug out a, 
oh, oh, the Shadets, you know, wearing those suits, you know. So if somebody put it up and uh, our Facebook person put it up and put, did the, the jacket yellow again, it was a black and white photo. You'll see it, you should have a look, it's a laugh. It's good. I will have a look, I absolutely. Anyway, as you, as you said, yeah, we started at 61 with the Shadets and uh, and that was that was the we kept that name right up until well 1970 really you know it was uh, by the time we got to well the time we got to 1970 the Shadets was beginning to sound like a very dated kind of name you know like the Ronettes and the Shadets and the and the Ets and the, you know and the Ikets and the thing and it right. wasn't and of course then by that time you know the guys were had, uh, daft names like the Marvel 400 and all these all these crazy names were all coming at the time, you know. So we knew that we said, well, we need a change, you know, we need to get some, we need a kind of change. And that's when we got Nazar, and that there again, we've got a Canadian to thank for that because that was uh, Robbie Robertson with the band when he wrote The Weight, you know, I pulled into Nazareth. And when when we were looking for a name at the time, oh, no, 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 that's my drummer phone, and no, no, I'm just, <laughs> sorry, so that's me. That's me. Hang on a minute. Lee, I'm I'm doing a I'm doing a I'm doing a thing a television thing in in Canada with Kelly, all right? All right, so no, oh no, I'll talk to you. I'll I'll see you. I'll see you at the gig. No, no, I'll I'll, I'll speak to you about cheers, pal. Oh, I, know, I know the drummers here. Right? Lee, the one last thing you were here. There you go. And so anyway, we did um, when, when we were sitting in the local. I've, I've, I've told this story a million times, but when we were sitting in the, the local pub, and I'm trying to think, you know, local hotel, and uh, think of a name, and the weight came on. You know, we were just playing, you know, and, and, and on the radio station or something. There was an apple down to Nazareth. I said, yeah, so I said, what about Nazareth? That sounds okay. And the guys, they, they didn't all jump up and down and say, "What do you do? That's a wonderful name." But they, you know, never ever went, "No, that's okay." So. We wrote it down and it looked okay, so that was it. So that that was a, a Canadian that gave us that name. Yeah, so right, that's interesting, Pete, that you mentioned that because I'm going to get to the, to the comments. We have a ton of comments already, and actually, that's one of the questions that was being asked. So, uh, oh my good buddy Lee Canfield says, "Good afternoon, Kelly, and good evening, Pete. Uh, just wanted to thank you and Nazwa for providing the soundtrack for my teenage years and present day life. As well, I can air base your riffs." In the intro of Telegram, like nobody, peace and keep on rocking. <laughs> <laughs> love, love you, Lee. Uh, Alfie Galpin, who you probably know, is saying hi, Pete. It's been oh, a while. Hi, hi. See, you, Alfie. Hope well. See you this year, hopefully. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alfie's a great friend of mine. Uh, Dwayne Watson, another talented musician, is saying congratulations, Naz, on your 50 years. Uh, Scott McCluskey is saying something inappropriately yeah whatever so we're going to go into a real comment here uh bernie aubin is in the house oh, he's uh, he says, hi uncle bernie <laughs> bernie you got me into this okay <laughs> yeah and thank you bernie by the way uh, for setting this up mark gladstone from prism is in the house he's saying he hey pete mark from prism. Perfect, how you doing? Uh, i'm not, i've never seen these guys for years now because of this you know like i say normally normally i would see these guys but uh Hopefully, hopefully this year. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully this summer for sure. So speaking of the tour this summer, let's. Can you tell us a bit about the new album and like what we have to look forward to? Well, I'm not. Allowed, I'm seeing this one of these daft things. You know, the record companies. I'm, I'm. I'm not allowed to say the name of the album yet. You know, but they haven't announced it. You know, they like to do that. But it's um, not that, that matters. You'll hear about it quite soon anyway. But as I say, I'm not even sure about the day. I, I can never get these things right. I'm sure. I'm sure somebody said to me March, but I think it might be April. I'm, I don't know. Maybe it is March that's been released. Um, it's got 14 songs in it. That's uh, the 25th album, Nazareth. So it's, you know, like I say, it's quite a milestone. And, um, you know, I think, I think people like this one. It's, uh, it's different. It's a different from Tattooed on My Brain. It's different again. You know, we don't like to do the same kind of things all the time. So there's a different sort of vibe on this one uh, but it was it was good fun to make it was actually it was this was one that was made during the pandemic thing so every day we went to the studio where to do these tests i was fed up 
getting things stuck up my nose, you know, every <laughs> every place, every day, every day, because right. you had to check, you know, to make sure everything was fine and all this, you know. So it was it was a bit silly as far as that's concerned, but uh, ah, we got it done in the end, and it's uh, ah, it should be. I think I think you'll like it. But, uh, looking so forward to that, and and uh, I know that you are the father of Lee Agnew, who is is the current drummer. You just phoned me there, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was Liam on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us about the the other current members of your new lineup of the current lineup, Pete? Yeah, well, there's well Lee obviously, and uh, Jimmy, who's well, Jimmy's been with us. Well, Jimmy's the longest serving guitar player in Nazareth. Uh, you yeah. know, he, Jimmy's been with us for. Oh, that must be 20, 28 years now, you know, so it's a long, long time. And the reason I knew Jimmy in the first place was him and Lee used to go to, a, a, a thing it was a, a, in Perth in Scotland, a thing called the Rock College up there. And it was all, it was, it was great. So like, you know, rock school kind of thing, you know. And they were all really good musicians. You had to be good to get into the thing. You didn't go there to learn, you know. Right. Uh, so they met up there and they actually played in two or three different bands together. And that's when I first saw Jimmy playing guitar, where it was in a band with Lee, you know. And that was way, 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 way back, you know. And so that's how he sort of eventually came to my attention. And when we were looking for a guitar, we went for him. And of course, uh, well, there's myself. And of course, everybody knows that Dan had to retire because of health, you know. and. Um, so we were looking for we were looking for a singer and it's a very very difficult thing i mean you can't to to replace or to to get someone else to do to replace dan mccafferty it's a big pair of shoes to fill you know because uh dan's got such a an unusual voice you know he's 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 a one-off you know he's the sound of his voice and everything so what happened was um when we were doing the well, not additions but when we were looking for somebody people were sending in tapes you know they were all sending i mean i got i got literally hundreds of tapes I and I mean, thank you to everybody that sent them i mean it was great to get them and lots of great singers let me tell you i mean a lot of really 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 good singers but the majority of them were like doing dan sound alikes you know they were right. trying to do and when this is what we knew that if we were going to keep going and if we were going to get another singer then the thing that we really couldn't do was get a Dan sound alike because he would just get hammered, you know, like by the public and the fans and everything. So we said if we were going to have to, to you yeah, were going to do it, then we'd have to make a change, a big change in the band, you know, and have a different approach to what we were doing, a different approach to the Nazareth songs. So when we heard that, when we heard, we heard uh, Carl, Carl Sentence, who's the guy that's singing us now, when we heard him, uh, somebody somebody told me to have a look at him, and um, I had to look at him on the uh, on the YouTube thing, and I thought, yeah, this guy can sing. So when he came up to do a, a we actually got him up to Scotland to do an audition with us, and we knew like with the first song when we played the first song, uh, we knew that was we said, like that's it, you got the job. And I mean, he sounds nothing like that, but he's but he sounds he's got a different a different thing. You know, he's a really great singer, but he's a uh, and he's not a Dan sound alike, <laughs> so and he does he, and he does he does the th he, he does the Nazar the songs and 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 his way, but I mean we've now we've been touring with Carl for oh let me see now that was twenty fifteen he joined us so he's been with us seven years now you know and he was accepted well it was it was it, he's very good in stage he's very he's got very good stage presence he's got he's a good showman and everything he's a good front man, and uh, right away. When when we when he was introduced on stage when we brought him out, I mean right away he was accepted. You know he he, he was accepted by the Nazareth fans. I mean you always get one or two. You'll always get one or two. You know that. Uh, right. You know, when you expect that, you expect that. But on the whole, you know everybody was really really impressed with the guy, and uh, and he's become he's become a fixture. You know, and then For when sure. people, you know, you know when people write and. They, they talk about you know they talk about him you know and, and uh, he gets a lot of, gets a lot of mail and stuff yeah he's he's good he's been good it's been like I say it's been a change it's been a a big change I mean it was either it was either not do anything at all you know or just say well that's it we're going to pack up with the band well we don't know anything else to do now you know I would imagine yeah <laughs> you're just you're just you're going to play until you drop you know for and sure. 
So Dan was quite, I mean, even when, when he, you know, when he had to play, I mean, he was adamant. I mean, the night that he had to say it, you know, when he was, we were in Switzerland, when he just couldn't make it on the stage that night. And I mean, the first thing he was saying, you've got to keep playing, you've got to get somebody. And that was him, you know. So, you know, with, we had his blessing. And um, and it's worked out fine. We've got, a, we've got a different kind of Nazareth now, but it's a good, it's a good Nazareth. Right, and I and I understand that you did have Dan's Dan's blessing, and and I understand also that the first gig that you ever played with Carl just happened to be in your hometown. Well, uh, we did, well, we did. Wow. We, no, we did. Um, we did a couple with him, but it was in the first. It was I think it was only like his sixth gig or something. We did. We did a couple up in the in um, in Sweden, in Finland. I think we did a couple out there, but. He came and he, had to, he was playing a hometown. No and, 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 of course, Dan's from there as well. And Dan was there that day, actually. So he actually came up. That was the last time Dan sung with us. He actually, at the, after when we, for the encore, he came up. And he, would, and, he, and he could manage it. And he came up and he did the Broken Down Angel with us and Carl and everything, you know. But that, I mean, Carl had to come on there to a hometown crowd with Dan sitting in the audience. Um, you know. Again, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> not the easiest thing for the man. You know. uh, no, he did very well. He did very well. And again, as I say, he was he's been accepted by the fans. And we, I mean, you you know, we get a lot of what a great reaction uh, as soon as we started playing. We expected. You're always expecting to get a bit of snash, you know, when, when somebody, anybody replaces anybody in the band. It doesn't matter who they are, you know, you're another guitar player, another drummer, or whatever. Um, but when another singer, you know, it's, it's any a singer, any singer is the hardest person to, to replace in any band because, you know, a guitar player, anybody can, when I say anybody, but any good guitar player, you can imitate another guitar player, you know. Like, Play it like that. Play, get the sound like. Well, you can. You can, and you can play it, and you can learn these solos, and you can do that. And if you're a drummer, same deal. Same deal as an instrumentalist, bass player, whatever you know. But a, a vocalist, it's, this is just you know, it's unique. You know, it's not. It's, it's a different thing. So it's always the hardest, the hardest person to, you know, to 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 do it with. But, uh, I think you've it, obviously you've obviously struck gold with Carl, and you know, many bands have to replace players that's just life and you know and I think that it is so important that you know that a new member fills the role with the same you know in integrity and general essence of the previous you know member but I think it's really crucial that they add their own nuances and their own style because I really think at the end of the day true fans they really just want to continue to hear the music that they love of course you know I mean they, they, you know, and they want you know even uh I mean, you see the, the the bands that do the the tribute bands. You know, there's loads and loads of tribute bands. Sure. Uh, I mean, so people do like the, they know that that's not their band, you know, but they like the music and stuff. I mean, they've got these. I don't know if you get if you've seen them over there, but the Australian Pink Floyd. I mean, these guys, these guys sell out Wembley. I mean, it's just oh, like, I've seen them on YouTube. We're I've talking about twenty thousand seaters. These guys are doing. <laughs> they're not even Pink Floyd, you know. So you've got. I don't know how many. I mean, I don't know how many queens are running around the world at the moment. But there must be a hundred, you know, and and they're there for the for the songs. Uh, need we say Elvis? Maybe two million. And yeah, maybe, and, and then some. <laughs> and many impersonators, you know. That, so, you know, people want to hear the songs from those people, you know, and uh, so we're, we've not quite reached that stage yet. I'm still hanging in there, so there's still got an original there, but there's a lot of bands like that, you know, there's uh, at one point everybody was saying oh, you know, how can you still call it Nazareth with just one, uh, you know, original member, so I said, well, do you still call it ACDC, you know? Do you, exactly. still, do, you, do you still call it Guns N' Roses, you know? You still call it you know, there's, there's most of, there's dozens of bands that have got that. Um, they're, they're there for the music. They're there for the music, and, uh, and that's uh, there for the, the, the actual songs and the material. You know, great. You know, Pete, twenty five studio albums. Um, you know, platinum albums, gold albums. Um, loved then, continue to. You know, people still want to hear this music, and we still want to hear new music from you. And I'm just curious, 
Do you have a particular album or maybe even a song that for some reason is maybe a little more special to you or? As, you know, it's funny, I like, I like, I like some, I like something on every album, you know, I mean, there's no, I don't, I don't think anybody likes whole albums, you know, because even when you're playing on them, you know, you're, you're going like, well, I'm, I'm like, that song's okay, I quite like that one, but I really like that one, you know, so I've got a lot of, um, I don't have an actual favourite album as such, you know, I've, uh, I mean, usually your favourite, as everybody says, they're always the favourite is the one that's done, because it's, it's, it's fresh and it's new, right. you know, and it's and it's in your mind. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, it's it, you're still you've just finished playing it. It hasn't got stale to you, you know. But I mean, to be to be truthful, just I mean, on just about every album we've done, there'll be a track that uh, if someone put, I think, oh, I like this one. Oh, I, I remember that one, you know. So there's no really, I mean, nah, there's nothing. There's not one song that I would say. You know, if you want to listen to another, you must listen, you know. To right, that. right. Well, I, that's a fair answer because as I was saying earlier, it, it's hard for me to pick a favorite. Although I will say, um, oddly enough, we met, I met the band Nazareth years and years ago. I think it was back in the early 80s and I had my first job at a record store. Uh, and it was Kelly Stereo Mart in Regina. And uh, we, were, we were always getting backstage passes and tickets to shows. And so it was the first time I had seen you live and then we met briefly backstage. Um, and it's okay if you don't remember, because I barely remember it. I just remember being terrified. I remember walking into the green room and you guys were, yeah, I was maybe 18 and you guys were sitting around, there was food and alcohol everywhere. And I remember just, I remember just freezing. <laughs> and, talk, and talking in an incomprehensible language as well, probably to you. <laughs> um, but my point with that was, I, I mean, I was speechless because I was thrilled. I, you know, I, in my mind, you know, I'm, I was in the middle of rock and roll royalty and I was, I was 18 and I, my mind was blown. But when I heard Sunshine done live that night, it was the first time I'd seen you live, I decided then and there that that was going to be my wedding song. Yeah, so, well, yeah, I've got me and a thousand million other people. So literally 20 years later, that song was my wedding song. Yep, that's the most, it's, it's, it's the Canadian wedding song, the Sunshine. <laughs> that's we actually call it that, the Canada wedding song. Um, because we found that out very, very quickly when we came there. And it was always... It was always quite funny because Dan used to say when he was introducing this song, you know, maybe some of you, uh, you know, you all love this song, you know, <laughs> but maybe some of you that are now divorced really hate this song, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's not, and don't blame us, you know, but no, the song is the song, it, it, it gets, it's, it's done very, it's used at weddings as well at home, I've got to say. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Canada. Canada, the sun, the, it is, the Canada wedding song is the sunshine. I mean, it used to be when we toured, uh, in fact, right now, we don't play it here, but when we come to Canada, that will be in the set. Right. But when we, go, when we go to the rest of the world, we don't play that song, you know? We play it in Canada, but uh, because we'd get shot if we didn't, you know? They'd want their money back. <laughs> Simple, That's you know? Canadian or a friendly people. But you know, <laughs> you, you come to Canada, it's like you got to play Sunshine, you got to play Love Hearts, and you got to play This Flight Tonight, definitely. You know, so um, that, Absolutely. You, got, you got these, you got these three in there. You're safe. It's a and it's a it's a beautiful wedding song. And, you know, and he's not like he's not like Sunshine anymore, Peep. But maybe my if I get married again, maybe my next wedding song could be Hair of the Dog. <laughs> well, 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 actually, with Sunshine, with Sunshine, it's funny because Dan just. Um, a couple of years ago, when we did, when we did, Dan did a, a solo album. After he left us, he did his last, his last solo album, the last testament, he called it, right? And he was recording it down in the studio where we had been recording "Tattooed on My Brain," which was the last album in 2018. Yeah. So it was funny. I was, I was actually at home, and uh, Dan phoned me up, and he said. Um, Listen, he said, I'm, I'm in here with the producer and, and this guy loves Sunshine. You know, he's, he, he's one of his favourite songs. And he just wants to play the piano and he's got me just to sing it. And I'm just, you know, we're, we're thinking about maybe putting it on the album. He said, but he wants me to sing. He said, would you mind nipping down and putting the harmony on it? And I said, ah, I said, when do you want me? He said, I said, I'll be done in five minutes. So I jumped in the car and we went down, I went down to the studio and Dan was sitting there with the producer and the guy's from the Czech Republic, he's from Prague. And he was wow, oh, nice to meet you and Pete and uh, blah blah blah. So he played the track. So it was just the the piano and just dancing and so on. And the guy said, uh, 
and you go. So I went and and I did the I did the, the, the harmony for it. And so that was it. And we came in and the guy was like, "This is amazing. This is absolutely wonderful. Take one. You do this and take one." And and they were like, "Have you any idea how many times him and me have sung this song?" <laughs> I mean, if I didn't do it and take one, I, I needed, I needed, so, one, you, know? <laughs> you know. So actually, we have actually recorded "Sunshine" again after all those years we did it. Uh, so the, if you if you check that out and it's in the last testament, it's just the piano and Dan and me singing "Sunshine." It's a quite a nice, it's a nice version of it as well. Very nice version of it. It's just another, another sunshine. To listen to, yeah, yeah. Where were you, Pete, the first time you heard yourself on the radio? Do you remember that? The first time you ever heard yourself on the radio? Aye, when we did, well, the first time we had, the, on the radio, the, 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 well, the first hit single, the first hit was uh, Broken Down Angel, and I remember it getting played on the, the sort of, the, the Radio 1, which was, when you're on that radio, that, that meant you were heading towards mm -hmm. uh, so we were actually driving down the M1 motorway at that, and we actually pulled off the road to actually listen to ourselves. But uh, now, but before that, we used to do we we did a lot of the the, the sort of nighttime shows and stuff like that, you know. So we, 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 I, I, I can't really remember the first time. We seemed to be always doing it, you know. The, even back before we were, even back before we were what you call a, a, a full time band, you know, we still did little radio things here and there. So. Right. I can't really remember the first. Uh... So what, what are you most proud of, Pete? A little bit of a personal question, but what are you most proud of? Most proud of? Yeah. Well, I've been mean, actually well, uh, still going, you know, and the, the very fact that we're still, ha we're still happening. I'm, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really proud that we're still doing new albums, you know, because sure. these days, you know, you don't, obviously everybody knows, you don't, you don't make records, you don't, you don't make records to make money. I mean, that's stupid. Nobody, you know, you give them away. They, they, they're given away for nothing. You know, they're, they're free. But so it's it's great. You do them to to let people know that you're still being creative. You know that you're even though even though when you go and you play your your live set when you do the set when I play the set tonight. I mean, I've got it there someplace. Yeah, it's, we're doing just an hour set, and everything on it will be a set for maybe one track from the last from the, the last new album that will be all from stuff from a way back and that's what you do that because you've got to do that because people that's why they buy the ticket they want to hear the hits you know and uh, so it's nice to be uh, you, you do that obviously you do that but it's nice to still be able to record new songs you know and let them hear new songs whether there's room in the set for new songs is not that's a different thing you know but it is a different thing you know so yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really proud that that we are we are still coming away with thirteen and fourteen new songs every couple of years, every three years, you know, and I'm very proud of that. You know, Pete, I have to say that you know we love that I love, and I'm sure we all do love that you're you know you're still out there doing what you were put on this earth to do, oh, wow. uh, which is bringing us the music that we love, and you show no signs of slowing down, and I love that because I think that you are a brilliant example of how we can enjoy success at in any season of our life you know there's not a cut off ceiling where it's like throwing in the towel i, I find that so inspiring well it was always you see the things where we came from it was harder to get to actually get on because when you're up you were in the back of beyond and i mean i think canadians know the feeling a little bit with us you know when it's uh you have the poor cousins you know we were like that and, and you know if you the, the scottish bands they were all great scottish bands, but you never heard them on record you know the, the, they weren't from they weren't from London, and then those those guys from Liverpool kind of changed that. You know, they had to come north of London there uh, once those guys came in. Yeah, that kind of that kind of changed things a bit. But then up in Scotland, you still had now and again you had a band that would maybe make a record, get a single or something like that. But Nazareth were the first Scottish band to get like an hit, if you like, you know, to be recognised as an album band, if you like, you know. Outside, outside of Britain, you know, when, when we got hits in other countries, so we were the very, we were the very first ones to ever do it. We were the pioneers, you know. Right. We very, very proud of that one. Um, and so, so we know, you know, you, you know, you know what it's. Like I say we know it was a, it was hard to get, it was hard to get into the recording business, 
it's not like it is now where everybody can make a record, you know, and, uh, and everybody does. You know. uh, but it, it wasn't like that then. It was, I mean, to actually be going to have a conference year was a very big deal. You know, you, you know, it was just what, you know, it was incredible. So, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a big thing, and and we were very proud to be the first ones to to do that and still be here. It's exactly, exactly. Watch the screen. You got to be big enough for the head to screw up. <laughs> Pete, what, one more question before we wrap it up here. What makes you happy? What makes you the happiest? Yeah, let me see. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just normally happy to tell the truth. I'm, uh, I'm, we're having a, we've got, we've got an, a, a sort of a, a decent balance, you know, with the, with the way that we, the, the way we, that we do things. I mean, everybody's playing, everybody's still playing a lot more these days, a lot, a lot of live gigs, but we still manage to, you know, try and space it out so we we'll have time off the road, you know, and. Uh, yeah. So we'll have a we'll have a, a pretty decent balanced life, you know. And uh, that's about it really. I mean I, there's there's not you know, I couldn't say I, I love to go to the pub because I don't go to the pub. And I don't know what makes me happy. That used to make me happy. Um, we were talking about that before the show. <laughs> no, no, so you know, there's a, like I say, uh, what makes me happy is to wake up every morning and go, Oh, that's still here. That's very good. Every day's a bonus. Absolutely. And I think that's true for any of us. I think an attitude of gratitude goes a long way. And, you know, sometimes, you know, especially when things are crazy, like they are currently, I mean, you can live in that world or you can live in, you know, am I okay in this moment? Do I have everything I need yeah. right in this moment? Absolutely. Well, you see what's going on everywhere else, you know, it's, I mean, we, we've we got, we're, we do a lot, uh, we tour a lot in Russia. We do, because the band was massive up there. And, right. uh, we do big tours up there, and again, we were the first band ever, European, uh, Western band to do coast to coast of uh, Russia, and that's that's a coast to coast. That's <laughs> that's ten time changes, you know, uh, time zones, and um, and we go we go there a lot. Now you see what's happening up there now, you know, like I'm su we're supposed to be going there, uh, the end of the end of February we were supposed to be going there to do a tour. Now, now, the COVID thing was always going to be different, but you see what else is going on now, you know, it's, uh, very, and Ukraine, again, is another big country for us. We play a lot there. So, you see how things are going there at the moment. So, I don't know if we're going to be playing up there for a long time. You know, but, uh, right. Uh, it's, not, it's not just a pandemic to worry about, it's the state of the... Just all the, the other stuff that's going on, right? Well, I, I, you know, I think it's amazing that you have a gig coming up here in just a little over an hour. And, uh, you know, Pete, we just, and I'm, and I know I speak on behalf of everybody watching, we just cannot thank you enough for enriching our lives with songs that, you know, literally were and still are the soundtrack to our lives. And, right. and we can't wait to see that tour bus pull up in our city this summer. There you go. There's a set for tonight, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really, we can't see it. Can you read us a couple? What's the first song that you're going to kick things off with tonight? Yeah, turn on your receiver. <laughs> oh, oh, receiver. <laughs> so it's very good. Very good. It bangs all the way through. We don't. We, we don't have a long set. We're supposed to just have an hour, but it lasts a wee bit more than that. But there's all the goodies. There's all the goodies in there. Just uh, go and do my press ups now to get ready for it. <laughs> get pumped up, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, I wish I was there, and I think turn on your receiver is a great way to kickstart an amazing night. And um. <laughs> We'll see what the see what the sound engineer thinks when we get started because I've never I don't know who he is. Yeah, you were, we were talking before the show about that, and the, your real sound engineer had a bit of a car breakdown. Yeah, I, be, I believe he's in. I believe he's getting towed back to London in the back of a tow truck. At the oh minute. no! So we're we'll still level one. Uh, Pete, you're you're absolutely delightful, and I I can't thank you for your time today. And it's it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. It was nice to talk to you, and uh, and like I say when we get to see you when we when we get over. Um, we've, we've we've got a couple of the shows already. I think we're doing. I think we we'll start off in. Um, I think we we'll start off in Regina, and then we're going to um, uh, Minnedosa. We've, we haven't done. Oh, that's you know, a big. Show. We haven't done that one for a long time. We used to do that. We've done that one a lot of times. We haven't done that for a while. And uh, hopefully all the usual ones. Hopefully they'll all come. Bernie, he can tell you. 
after he's got my bus ready for me there. Uh, <laughs> he can send, send me the dates. Yeah, let me know where we're Very well filled in. <laughs> uh, so we actually start uh, at the end of July, and uh, and it runs through. I think the tour's running through to about the 21st, the 22nd of August. So it's about three weeks, just a three-week tour. So it'll be good. It'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Well, we're looking forward to it too, Pete. I can yeah. tell you, that. we just we can't wait to hear the new album. And by the way, folks, um, the website that's scrolling across the bottom of your screen, uh, that's where you can find all things Nazareth. Uh, really, some really cool merch and uh, the other albums. And and so oh, check. I just, out. I, just, I just realized that was going along there. I never saw that. No. <laughs> Legendary awesome. Pete Agnew. There you go. It's nice to be a legend. Actually, it was. It's quite funny because uh, <laughs> we've got a there's a, a Dunfermline, you know where. Where I live. Um, they started this, they've got this new museum place, a museum, it is a museum. Yeah. And uh, and they've got, you know, they got my, my first, you know, my actual, the, the original <coughs> base, the B base that I did all the, the, the original recordings on. And they've got this, that, all these things from us, from Nazareth, it's up there. And, yeah. and that's what I was, Dan, Dan and I were talking about it, said, like, you know, for a while you were, you know, we were dinosaurs for a while, you know, that's when, oh, you know, you have dinosaurs now. And if you, that's it, you know, when in the 90s you were getting popular. And then if you lived long enough, you became legends, you know, you, you Absolutely. through the dinosaur, but you're a legend. But now we're actually artifacts. We're in museums now, you know, so <laughs> then. Not many people can say that, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> So now we're in, we're in, well, I'm in a museum, so that's a, that was, it was so <laughs> My grandchildren, one of my grandchildren was telling me, you know, that he was up, that his school was, his school was visiting the museum or something, you know, and they're going to be saying, your grandfather's in here. Your granddad. Well, so say, do your grandkids know that grandpas are rock legends? Do they know that? Well, that doesn't even really mean anything to them, no. I mean, they've got their own, their own father, he's he's a better bass player than me, my son, anyway, Chris, so it's, uh, no, he's um the no, they don't really. They're surrounded with um, you know everybody. All the all my family are all, all musicians. You know, Stevie mm -hmm. is a, a singer and player. Chris is a player. Uh, Stuart plays piano. Lee plays with me. So these kids are surrounded by you know um, uh, musicians. If we have a party at uh, my house, we don't need to hire a band. You know, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> We don't need to do that, no. <laughs> That's awesome. But I love what you said, Pete, because I, first of all, I love your accent. And I love what you just said a few minutes ago. It's it's great to be a legend. <laughs> oh, oh, it's really, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm just, I just realized that I'm, I'm reading it now. There you go. I have to get a screenshot of that. that this. Yeah, and well deserved. Well deserved, my friend. It's been such a pleasure talking to you today. Oh, it's been great talking to you, Kelly. And like I say, I'll see you when I get over. And the rest of you that are watching here, I'll hopefully see you as well. And um, come and say hello. Absolutely, we will do that. We'll be looking for that tour bus this summer. Continue success to you, Pete. You have the best show ever tonight, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much, Kelly. Thank you, Pete. Everybody, thank you so much for joining Pete and I today. Uh, next week, uh, we have uh, another special guest that I'm going to do a video right after the show to announce that. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Until we see you next time, stay safe and sane. Take care and be really nice to each other. Bye-bye.